All you gotta do is take this rotor, do a couple doos, and then put it on. You know what I'm saying? There is no torque for this rotor because you just slide it in like that. What you say? If you can't slide, you can't drive. That's it. That's just the rule. What's going on everyone? It's your boy Salim from Too Fast and we're going to be showing you the whole step-by-step -step process on uh, pretty much building the drift car, getting it all ready for the next 2020 season. Like, we're super stoked. And we got, uh, Sean's a little busy right now editing, so I got Nick behind the camera holding the camera. What's up Nick? <laughs> So what we're gonna do first, like before you, before I even start on my turbo kit, before I start install, we're gonna we're gonna be showing you how to install the whole turbo kit and all that. But before we do all that, we gotta make sure the motor is running mint. We gotta make sure the vacuum is up to par. We have to make sure there's no misfires in the motor. So we don't want to install a turbo kit and then realize after that it's misfiring, right? So we gotta make sure the car is running perfect. Um, we're gonna have the brakes working perfect. Then we're gonna install the the, the turbo kit, right? What, what my objective is now, I'm gonna be installing, see we're gonna get rid of this lousy single piston caliper and we're gonna upgrade to the Brembo calipers for the front and I'm gonna do two calipers in the rear. So we're gonna do two calipers on each side. And that being said, one is gonna be for the hydro and one is gonna be for my normal braking system. So you guys are gonna see that whole process of pretty much installing the upgrading to the Brembo brakes for the Nissan 350Zs, the same for the G35, 03, all the way to what year, Nick? I'm pretty sure you know your, your G guy. 07? 06, 07, pretty much the same, yeah. right? Yeah, around there. I'll, we'll double check that and look it up and put it in the description for you guys so you know. So, we'll start off with the front on today's episode and what we gotta do right now, I'm gonna be upgrading all the lines as well. So I'm gonna remove everything and then pretty much see how it goes, mock it up, see how I'm gonna have all the lines running and all that. And we'll go from there, so let's get going. Loosen these two bolts right here, and that's pretty much gonna release the caliper from the actual cradle itself. Deck tip, always put your bolts back in where you took them out from just so you don't you don't forget or use them putting the longer ones in the wrong spot and stuff like that. Always put it back in the right whatever bolt you take out, put it back in the in the whatever hole you took it out from. Remove whatever you got to and just thread it back in or leave a mental note for yourself. You know? From there, remove your caliper and set it aside. Take your bolts that you took out, always put them back. It's not like you're gonna reuse them, but if you ever give them or sell them to anybody, it might come in handy for them. Remove your pads. Over here, we'll be removing this bad boy right here, and this is what actually holds the caliper cradle to the spindle itself. So it's 22 mil for the caliper cradle bolts. That sounds good. This bad boy right here is making a lot of noise. Bring that close up, Nick. Let them hear it. It's not supposed to be making that sound. What we're gonna be unbolting is the hub from the knuckle. Four bolts in the back at this point. It's very easy. You better do it now than do it later when it gets worse, you know? Or 
is smart. Not so you're gonna have four of these bad boys right here. As you can see, they're all identical in length. Oh, where's the last one? Oh, right here, found it. Put these somewhere safe. And we're gonna need a hammer, man. Here. Now we have this bad boy out. Let me, have, let me bust it up. Oh, oh, don't get Tony hit in the face. And why are we on this? It. Oh, look, I found a piece of tire. Must have been from the last track day. It's Corona time. Hey, it's Corona time right now. Always stay sanitary, guys. <laughs> Stay sanitary, guys. Always. Yes. <laughs> if you're in your car, you can't get corona. All right, guys, so here we are. You guys seen yesterday the wheel bearing was all mush up, you could say, mush up the wheel bearing. So now there's no noise, no And we just bolted back in the wheel bearing. Torque to spec, of course. You know, drift car spec, of course. <laughs> And uh, now I get the bearing on. The nice part about having an angle kit is uh, actually being able to turn the, the knuckle this much so you can just tighten that wheel bearing right away. Um, next thing we'll do, we're going to put the rotors back on. We're going to both up the calipers and uh, route up the, the actual brake line. So let's get going, baby. Ba -pow! All you got to do is take this rotor, do a couple doo -doos, and then put it on. You know what I'm saying? There is no torque for this rotor because you just slide it in like that. Beautiful. Next step. Bolting in this beautiful caliper. And painted by yours truly. I know I was gonna send it to our, our body shop, but I'm very excited to start drifting. So what we're doing right now, we're bolting in the caliper. It's just two bolts in the back of these Brembo um, calipers, very simple, but don't be fooled. You have to make sure you install the brake pads properly. You gotta make sure all the pins are lubed and in properly and obviously fastened properly, which is the most important part, right? It's not just bolting in the two, two bolts for the caliper carrier. You gotta make sure everything is moving freely, right? You don't want your, your brake pads to seize to your rotor at any given point. And I'm, we're gonna show you all that. Then what we're gonna do next is grab our pads, install our pads. We'll show you guys that very shortly. So we got our pads here, what I like to do, grab a little bit of anti-seize and just apply that on the side of the pads. Don't get it on the pad itself, but just on the sides, just so they, they move freely after in the long run. Many. Many abusive track days later. <laughs> Slide that bad boy in, just like that. It's a beautiful scene. Pull out this bad boy here. 
Grab your handy dandy anti seize just on the side a little bit right there. Also, I like to slide, slap a little bit of slider grease. Just where the sliders go. Grab your beautiful sliders. Unfortunately, my pads didn't come with new sliders, so I gotta use the old ones. I like to put a little bit of lube, you know, spread that around just like that. Slider grease. Always gotta lubricate things, keep them lubricated. Okay. You got the shims, slap that, that one goes like this, and then the other one will slide right into there, just like that. Lubricate the second pin. Mm -hmm. Keep it juicy, you know? So this way you do, you grab that shim right there, this piece here is supposed to see just like that and then you push down here so it's it can move freely and boom easy as one two three baby you and me now what do you got in there on, on these slider pins some of them some of them have them some of them don't fortunately for me these ones have cotter pins that will just slide into the slider and you don't have to worry about them ever coming loose that's the first cotter pin Here's the second bad boy. As you can see, everything is moving freely, and that's what you want. You want to see, you want to see everything, all the pads, everything be able to move freely and, and lubricate it nicely. Next step, it's, it's all fun and games till you gotta route the brake line. The brake line is the most crucial part because you gotta make sure on all steering angles the brake line itself is not being interfered with actually being tangled up or actually scraping on the tire itself or the sway bar links when you're under heavy you see right here actual brake line runs right behind the sway bar link so it's very easy for the movement of the sway bar to actually puncture the brake line so you have to make sure all that stuff is, is routed properly and that's what i'll be showing you guys today so we take out this clip right here this is actually what sandwiches oh let me grab it this is what actually holds the brake line in place so it doesn't move around to remove this clip, we used our special brake line uh, removal tool, 10 mil side. And that way, we just disconnect this beautiful brake line. We have our stop tech braided lines ready to go in. You just give it a little hammer and then boom shakalaka it was out, you know? So this is the OEM line right here. These rubber lines, they tend to expand when, when the actual brake fluid gets very hot. Not just that, over years they deteriorate and crack, you know. When, when, you, when, when that happens, you I don't want to keep nothing old in the car. Replace it, run the stainless lines. They won't expand when the fluid gets super hot. They last a lot longer than your average uh, brake lines. And especially when you're going to be putting a lot of abuse on the car, you don't want to be putting on old OEM products. Better to just replace it. One shot, boom. Adios amigo. Get the new one. And say a new blessing to the new one.
So I've got this part here. This part goes right through the OEM bracket there. And as you can see here, clips right through. And there you have it. So we'll do that right there. So I'm just threading in the OEM brake line into the into the, into the stainless brake line. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab this clip right here and L side facing upwards. I see that clip? Yep, this clip right here. L side going upwards. You see it'll sandwich right in. Let's put that in. Give it some love taps. So what we ended up doing, we routed the brake line, we, we played with it to see what would be the best for us, especially for the amount of angle we'll be running, and this is the way we decided to route it. Um, the bracket will go to the coilover itself, and then run straight down, right behind the sway bar link. Now routing will probably run another zip tie or something like that somewhere back here, just so it doesn't ever in interfere, and it'll come straight up here to the OEM uh, brake line. And what we do, we'll grab our special tool, which is the brake line wrench, 10 mil side, and we'll go, and go ahead and tighten that. Okay, so that's good. Here we'll tighten. So there's two crush washers, one on the front, one on the back. Make sure you got both in there. We'll go ahead and tighten that. And just enough. And then what we'll end up doing is just tightening the one bracket on the shock itself that is pretty much for the brake line. It's a 12, 12 mil bolt on our HSD coilovers that we have in this car. That's a muscle build up right there. Boom! Okay, now we got that tight, got that tight. What I'll do, I'll hold the camera, Sean. Can you go pump the wheel left and right for me? Perfect. Thank you, senor. Hey, you're welcome, senor. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, guys, this concludes our episode on installing the front big brakes in your Nissan 350Z drift car. The Brembo's are done on the fronts here. We're gonna do the finish up the other side, but uh, you guys already get the point on how to do the install. We're gonna show you guys the rear. The rear is a whole nother animal. We're gonna run the dual caliper rear brake setup. Uh, that being said, we're using the FDF bracket. So we're running two Brembo brakes in the rear calipers. One of them is gonna be for the actual OEM all four braking system. So a lot of guys delete the rear uh, calipers to, ru to run their hydro or even run an inline to use the one caliper in the back. But we're gonna have two different two, two different calipers, one for actual braking and one for rear rear uh, tire locking, rear, rear actual rim uh, locking. So stay tuned for that. It's gonna be a lot of action and a lot of here. Oh, yeah, already know. You can't drive. It is what it is.